Margaret Miller studied at Edinburgh School of Art in 1929. And this is where she met Wilhelmina Barnes Graham and William Gere, who was also a contemporary, one of her contemporaries, an artist, and later became a curator at the Towner Art Gallery. After Margaret studied at Edinburgh School of Art, she was awarded a scholarship to travel around Europe. And it was whilst she was in Paris on her way back from kind of traveling through um, Morocco and Spain that she actually met the art critic, Adrian Stokes. They moved to Carbis Bay, which overlooked St. Lives. There in their home, they were joined by Barbara Hepworth, Ben Nicholson and their triplets. They were all working together in this house. And as you can imagine, you've got all these different artists and an art critic and, and children as well, all sharing spaces and all still trying to practice as artists. So it was a very kind of crowded environment, but with lots of kind of stimulus. Um, and this was the, really the birth of the British modernism in St. Ives. Ben Nicholson and Nan Garbo, the Russian constructivists who had joined them in St. Ives, encouraged Margaret Mellis to do collage. They felt that this was something that she could really excel in. And with their encouragement, she did. She, she started doing collages and she really enjoyed work in this, in this medium. And we've been lucky enough to borrow three collages for this exhibition and this was you know they're, they're quite rare they're quite scarce so three is quite significant to have them here this piece sort of um, represents the sun the moon and this kind of playful indication of society within this kind of crossword but there's no there's no words in the crossword there's no questions there's no, and there's no answers the driftwood constructions that you can see around you are the result of 50 years of development and experimentation by Margaret Mellis. She artistically settled on making these works in the late 1970s, when she was at that time in her 60s, and focused on them for the final 20 years of her practice. Towner's positioning by the coast is part of the reason that Mellis's driftwood works are relevant for our audience and location. That and the opportunity to exhibit an overlooked female artist who deserves to be appreciated alongside her contemporaries. In the 1980s, Margaret rediscovered her first envelope drawing, dated from around 1956. This was an in insignificant little scrap of paper that she'd drawn a, a plan for a painting on. Um, when she rediscovered it, she realised instantly why she'd, why she'd kept the drawing she was drawn to the, to the kind of really hard mark making that she'd done in, in the piece. And the, the fact that the envelope contained in the whole kind of floral arrangement. Creating this small room in which to house as many of her envelope drawings as possible um, felt like a, a really integral part of this exhibition to show these small scale domestic pieces alongside the large scale driftwood constructions because these are two parts of her practice that were running alongside each other. When you come to see the exhibition I'd like you to leave feeling that you'd been introduced to, a ver to an overlooked artist. To, to Margaret Mellis. You, you may not have heard of her before, but you've probably heard of her contemporaries, um, Barbara Hepworth and Ben Nicholson, and you know about the St. Ives School, but you don't know that Margaret Mellis was there at the beginning when this all started. So we'd like you to, feel, to, to leave feeling that you've been introduced to a new artist that deserves to be known better than she is. I'm so pleased that this has come to pass, as it were, and it's, it's, it's thanks to um, Joe Hill and, and Karen Taylor that this show has been um, put on and um, we're looking at it as it should be or should have been so long ago.